All right, so today we're going to look at an example where we're taking the derivative of an equation by implicit differentiation. Uh, buckle in, kids. This one is going to get bumpy. It's a lot of algebra. So the first thing we uh, have to recognize is that we're dealing with a tan inverse. And we have to remember that the uh, derivative of tan inverse of, and I'm going to write this as f of x. I know the book just does it as x because we want to generalize it is 1 over 1 plus f of x squared times the derivative of f of x. All right. So uh, the book just writes it as 1 over 1 plus x squared uh, when they assume right that we're just taking the derivative of x. But that doesn't take into account of what happens when we're differentiating something other than just an x, that we have to use the chain rule. Right? And so we get 1 over 1 plus x squared times the derivative of x, which in the general case is just a 1, but in the better case, it's that f prime. So if we apply that to this, the derivative of the left-hand side will give us 1 over 1 plus 4x squared y, and then this thing is squared, right? and then times the derivative of this, which now has to use the product rule. So derivative of the first one, 8x times the second, plus the first times the derivative of the second. And that is just the derivative of the left side. OK. Equals derivative of the right hand side. Well, the first piece is easy. That's a 1. And then plus derivative of the second piece, also using the product rule. Derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. OK, so that's it as far as uh, calculus is concerned. We're done with calculus at this point. The rest is all algebra, and it's a lot of it. So uh, take it slow. Take it step by step. Remember your general rules. If we're trying to solve for something, and in this case we're trying to solve for dy dx, right? We got two of them. We need to isolate our variable. And we can't isolate, I'll do it in green, the dy dx that's in green because it's stuck inside this parentheses, right? We can't isolate it. We can't separate it from this other piece. So the only way we can do that is getting rid of those parentheses. And the only way we can get rid of those parentheses is to actually do the distribution, right? Take this and multiply it by everything. So the next step is going to be 8xy over 1 plus, and I'm going to go ahead and, and multiply this out just because it's going to make it easier to write it, 16x to the fourth y squared, and then plus 4x squared over that same thing, 1 plus 16, right, x to the fourth y squared, and then times dy dx. And then the right hand side is fine, right? We don't have to, this is already basically isolated, right? So we still have to combine like terms. All right, we'll put all this over here so we know that it's still there. All right, so let's uh, let's bring this piece over to the left, you know, and bring this piece over to the right. And so we've got 4x squared over this 1 plus 16x to the fourth y squared dy dx minus 3x. Sorry, that should be it a 2y. So this ends up becoming a 6xy dy dx. And that equals 1 plus 3y squared minus this fractional piece that we moved over, 8xy over 1 plus 16x to the fourth y squared. OK. Now, we want to factor out the dy dx, right? So 
So on the left hand side, um, what we also want to do is, uh, well we'll factor out first, 4x squared over this thing minus 6xy, this whole thing times dy dx. Now we know that in order to solve for dy dx we're going to have to divide both sides by that factor. You really don't want to divide by that thing because you've got a fraction with another piece and it just makes it ugly. So it's actually going to make your life easier if on the left hand side uh, you put it all over a common denominator and just make it one big fraction because then when you divide by the fraction you just flip and multiply. And then you might also realize that if we're going to have one big fraction on the left, it might be easier to have one big fraction on the right. Especially since we can recognize that this is going to become our common denominator on the left. And if we do one big fraction on the right, this is also going to be the same thing. It's going to be the common denominator of the fraction on the right. So when you flip and multiply, those two things will end up canceling, right? So let's do that work. On the left hand side you're going to get 4x squared minus 6xy times the bottom, right? 1 plus 16x to the fourth y squared all over this common denominator. Right? And this whole thing is times dy dx. And then on the right hand side the exact same thing. We have to multiply these two pieces by this common denominator. So you get 1 plus 3y squared quantity times quantity 1 plus 16x to the fourth y squared and then minus 8xy. And that whole thing is going to be over this new common denominator. So now when you flip and multiply, the common denominators are going to go away. Or if you want to think about it now, we can, since we have right, an equality, we can multiply both sides by the same thing. So we can end up canceling out these pieces. And then it's just going to be a matter of this stuff in yellow is now going to be divided by this stuff in blue and that's what dy dx is going to equal and then at that point oh I missed the parentheses sorry let me put that in parentheses there so um, and and that's you know good enough for what we need at this point but in order for it to really be truly reduced you're gonna have to actually foil out this stuff combine any like terms that you might have there aren't going to be any. Uh, foil out these two pieces. Again, combine like terms with the 8xy. Again, there aren't going to be any. So you're just going to get a big old polynomial in blue and a big old polynomial in yellow. And that is going to be dy dx. The yellow polynomial divided by the blue polynomial. Good luck. Okay, so uh, here is the yellow divided by blue. If you want to see the final algebra expansion, foil out this piece. So on the top you're going to get 1 right, plus 16x to the fourth y squared plus 3y squared, that's the 3y squared times the 1, plus now 3y squared times this piece, so 3 times 16, that gives you 48, and then x to the fourth, y to the fourth, and then finally minus 8xy. And you can see there's nothing in common. There aren't any like terms to, con to combine. On the bottom, 4x squared minus 6xy, that's the minus 6xy uh, times 1, and then minus 6 times 16 gives you 96 and then you get x to the fifth y cubed. 
that's as reduced as it's going to uh, going to get. If you want to put it in uh, perfect form, you know the rules are always list these things with the highest powers first. So technically, you should have uh, 48x to the fourth y to the fourth because that's the highest combined power, right? Plus 16x to the fourth y squared. Then the next highest um, could either be argued uh, y squared or xy. Then plus 3y squared and then finally your constant at the end. And then on the bottom this piece is your largest one so you actually have a, a negative leading coefficient. Then again, you could argue the xy over the uh, x squared. So we'll do x squared this time, just to show that it can kind of go either way with these. And then minus 6xy. That would be the the ultimate, you know, uh, reduced as far as you can go uh, in the perfect form uh, kind of way to do this one.